Hi, this is David Burton with Camp Software, and a couple of weeks ago I showed you a pretty simple way to package and, and install your FileMaker Runtime Solutions for the Mac operating system. So we thought we would follow up this week by showing the same thing on the Windows side of the house. We're going to use the same database, and we're going to create the exact same runtime. This time, however, we're going to use a third-party program called, and forgive me if I butcher this, the NO Setup 5, version 5. Uh, which makes the, the process pretty simple and of course it's it's a fairly powerful free installer tool uh, but we're only going to touch on the basics and we're just going to go through the wizard and let it do most of the work for us. So like last time we're going to begin by creating our runtime. We'll start with our developer utilities. We'll select our file. Uh, we have the option to rename the file, but this time I'll just keep it Camp Software. We're going to select our project folder. This time I'm just going to select the desktop. And our solution options, just like last time, we're going to create a runtime solution. The solution's name is going to be Camp Software. Provided I can spell it right. And we're going to leave everything else as is. Now I've already taken the time to create this for you so we don't have to go through this process because it can take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple minutes depending on how large your solution is. So go ahead and minimize this. And just to show you that I have actually created the runtime. And though the, the Mac version had a lot of files, the Windows version has even more. So you can see how very problematic this could be to try to distribute this to um, some non filemaker owners or some some non technical people so that's where I know setup comes in which I already have open once you open it you're going to as a matter of fact let me close it out just to show you what it looks like when you open it you met with you're greeted with a dialog box and you can create it an empty script file or you can create a new script file using the script wizard and that's the route we're going to go so just click on that and click OK, and then you get the, the basic welcome. And if if you've gotten to this point and you want to do everything yourself, you can you still have that option, but we're going to continue on with the wizard. We get to name the application. We'll leave the version, but you can version it. And you can add information about your company. You can either uh, choose to let this install in the program file folder or you can customize this. We're going to go with the default for now. And we're going to leave the application folder name the same. Um, I'm going to disallow my user to, to change the, uh, the application folder name. And we're going to leave this blank as well because this application certainly does need a folder. Now we need to select the main executable file. I'm going to navigate back to my desktop, go to my camp software folder, do it right, and then pick on the run, or click on the runtime. And here the user has the option uh, of starting the run, uh, starting the solution uh, after setup is finished. We're going to leave that the same, or we're going to leave that checked by default. And we also have the option of saying that, hey, there isn't a main executable file, but for a runtime solution, there always is. Now here's where we add all of our uh, supporting documents and this is where it can be a little confusing and this is one of the gotchas, or actually the only gotcha that I've run into so far. Adding files are pretty easy. You select add files, it takes you back to where you started and then just selecting uh, with beginning with the, the USR file, which you can't see that there but trust me it's the USR file. Putting down the shift and come all the way over you can get your libraries in one fell swoop. And if you scroll over, you can see that that's what you've done. You've collected all your libraries. Folders are a little bit more difficult and a little bit more time consuming. So you go back, and if you want to include your extension folders, go ahead, hit OK. And then it's going to ask you if you want uh, all the files in there to be included as well. And of course, that's yes. Now, at this point, where you have to go in and, and do a little extra work, the way that it's set up now is it 
will not include the folder. It will take the folder contents and dump it into the, the main uh, folder, your main application folder, which will cause this to fail. So you have to go in and do some editing, and this is only on your folder files. And the quickest way to do this is just to go up here where you can see the name of the folder, come back, highlight, control copy, and in your destination folder, go ahead and re-add that name. And what makes this a little bit time consuming is you have to do this for all of your folders. Unfortunately, this dialog box can't be resized. And you'll want to, since I've already compiled this, I'm not going to, you're not going to have to go through here and do this. Or we're not going to have to, for this demonstration, we're not going to do this with every folder. But you can kind of get an idea. You want to collect the name of the folder and add it into the destination subfolder. You'll hit next. You want to select the application start menu folder name. Again, we'll go with Camp Software. You can allow the user, the user to change the start menu folder name, but I'm going to disallow that. We're going, to let, we're going to create an internet shortcut and we're going to create an uninstall icon which, which makes this fairly powerful. Here you can add license file or any other information that you want to be shown either before, during, or after the installation. You can select your languages and this is where you're going to select your, your output file. Now I've already selected the final folder on my desk, I've already created the final folder on my desk, so we're just going to go ahead and select that. And the compile output base file name, uh, I'm going to leave it set up. I think it's set up in my, in my file. It's either set up or camp software in my, in my final folder. You can select a, a custom icon, and you can even set a password. And now once you've got to this, you hit finish. And then it asks if you'd like to compile the script now. You hit yes. And then it asks if you want to actually save the script that you've just created. And you can you can select yes, no, or cancel. I'm going to hit cancel uh, to stop the whole process. Now, since I've already done this, because it can be rather time consuming, our sample database here is just a few kilobytes and it took almost three minutes to compile it. So uh, it can be a little time consuming. If you come over to the final file, I do have the setup. And if you run this, it runs just like a regular installation. It selects the folder, the camp software, gives you the option to create a desktop icon, which I've already done so. And then it goes over all your information, where everything's going to be saved, and then any additional tasks which you may have selected along the way. And again, we've already installed this, so there's no need to go through the process again. So you can then launch your runtime, either from the Start menu, which, uh, which from the Start menu you have the option to launch your runtime, to go to your the website that you had designated earlier or to un uninstall I've chosen to launch give me just a couple seconds the first time And the first launch can be just a few minutes or just a few seconds, and then voila. So this is another way to get your runtime solution out to the masses. Uh, love to, to get your feedback. Love to hear what it is that you do or what your firm does. And again, uh, thank you for watching.